Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Um, today we're not writing a real program, we're just going to talk about um, understanding the 6502 stack, how the stack works, um, how to avoid the, the dangers of it, and uh, this applies to everything in the 6502 family, so that includes the 8502 that's in the Commodore 128, so they all handle it the same way. So the stack is a storage area that's managed indirectly. Instead of storing, you know, storing a value into a location with like STA or STX, something like that, you just say push this on the stack, and then you can pull things off the stack the same way. Um, if you're familiar with the idea of a stack in com in computers, you you know this is it's a pretty basic concept um, in any language, I would say. Um, but you use it a lot in assembly. Um, the stack is last in, first out. It's a, it's a LIFO buffer, would be another term for it. Um, last in, first out, meaning it's like a stack of plates. You put away plates, you know, you, you, you put them in a stack, then the last one you, or the next one you get off the stack later is going to be the one that's on top, the last one you put in. So if you push numbers on the stack 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, when you start pulling them off, you're going to get five, four, three, two, one. They're going to come back in in the reverse order. So last in, the last one in is the first one out. The stack pointer is an 8-bit register in the CPU, which keeps track of the top of the stack for you, so that you don't have to do it. Um, it's a it's an 8-bit register, so it's a, it's the low byte basically of the address of the, of the current address of the top of the stack and we'll see more specifically what that means when we get into examples here um, but normally in, in normal programming you don't think about where the top of the stack is the stack pointer takes care of that for you um, you don't you can't you can't change the value of the stack pointer directly like you can the X and Y registers you know, the other registers um, to change it, you have to transfer it to the X register, change it there, and transfer it back. And you have the TXS and TSX um, operations for doing that if you need to do that. Um, and we'll, we'll see an example of that here in a bit. Um, the stack page is normally page 1. Um, it can be moved on the Commodore 128, but regardless of where it physically is in memory, it always works the same way. You're always it's, it's always one page long and the stack pointer is pointing to the low byte of its address wherever whatever page of memory it happens to be in. You use the stack a lot or you can use it a lot in this kind of programming in 6502 programming because you only have three registers. You only have the accumulator and the X and Y register to push values around with and so a lot of times you find yourself with values in all those three registers and you need to do one you need to do something with one of, the, one of the registers especially the accumulator because the accumulator is the only register you can like add and subtract with or um, shift bits with and so you may have a value in the accumulator you don't want to lose because you're going to need it in a second but you need to do something else with the accumulator so a lot of times the the best way to handle that is just push the accumulator value on the stack do your other thing with the accumulator and then pull that value back we've seen that in some of the programs we've already been, already been writing um, it's just it's, it's generally the handiest way to do that as long as you know what you're doing and you don't cause problems the kind of problems we're going to talk about here um, and so a lot of times that's just do push the value to the stack use the register then pull the value back that you saved there are two main uses of the stack, and the the biggest danger is getting these two mixed up. Um, one use is in your programs when you intentionally use the stack by pushing something on it and then pulling something off of it with PHA and PLA. So that's something your programs actually do on purpose because you've programmed it to do that. The other thing that uses the stack is the CPU itself it uses it under the hood when you do JSR jump to subroutines and RTS return from subroutine. When you use those commands the CPU uses the stack for you to save the address or to get the address back. So 
and we'll see an example is when you jump to a subroutine the CPU automatically takes the current address that you need to come back to from the subroutine puts it on the stack and then when it gets to a, an RTS it gets that value back off the stack so your program with PHA and PLA can be pushing things on and off on and off the stack and the CPU is also pushing things on and off the stack when it hits JSR and RTS operations so if you get those overlapped like if your program has a JSR and then it runs into a PHA and then it hits an RTS you probably crash because when the CPU does this stuff it doesn't know or care whether you've changed the stack in between the JSR and RTS. The JSR just pushes an address on the stack and then when it gets the RTS it happily pulls back the thing on top of the stack assuming that's the address that it needs to come back to. If you've changed the stack by pushing something else off onto it or pulling something off of it then it's not going to get what it's expecting to get and it's going to jump off into some other area of, of memory and probably crash. So it's important you don't it's it's important you keep things matched up that if you push something on the stack you get it back off the stack before the CPU does a jump to subroutine or a return from subroutine that is going to also use the stack. You just have to make sure that that things kind of the you you kind of use them in pairs. Every push needs to have a pull um, so that you leave the stack alone for the CPU when it's when it's also using it. And you can't, I, I mentioned this before, but you can't you, or don't normally change the value of it directly. You have to use the, you have to get it into X, change it there, and then put it back with X, the, the stack pointer itself. Normally you just let it do its job by using PHA and PLA, and you don't care where the, where the values are going on the stack. You just let it, let it do that. And, uh, push them and pull them and and uh, just assume that it's working so let's do a little demo here um, we're going to combine the two things the two uses of the stack here so to start we'll load a with AA um, and we'll push that on the stack then I'm going to put in a I'm going to have some I'm going to sprinkle some no ops in this just to spread things out um, for when we're checking it out in the mo in the monitor, and then we'll jump to level two. Um, let's call let's call this level one. It doesn't really matter for the monitor, but just for our own purposes, we'll call that level one. Then when we come back from that subroutine, we'll do a no op. We'll pull a back, um, and then return it. That so that's the end of the program basically now level two let's load a with um, BB push that on the stack stick in a no op let's jump to subroutine level three no op pull that back RTS level three let's just do the same thing except we'll use CC as our value. All right, and I'm also going to stick some no ops in here, just these won't ever execute. These are just to spread things out in the, in the monitor. All right, so let's assemble that. And I don't know, yeah. All right, so if we look at the if we look at our code now, we're going from 1300 to 1321. Okay, so here's our code in the monitor without the labels. Well, let's just look. Let's just look through it first of all. Here's here's level one. So we're going to load the accumulator with AA. I'm going to push that on the stack. Then we're going to just do a no op. Then we'll jump off to 130C, which is level two, come back, pull the accumulator back, and return at the end of the program there. Okay, here's level two. And so this time we load A with BB, push that on the stack, 
jump off to level three, come back, pull A back off the stack. Okay, and then here's level three. So they're all basically the same thing, except we have A, A, B, B, and C, C. We also have these jump, jump to subroutines, which, oh, I got, we can't jump to level three here because we're already at level three. That wouldn't make any sense, would it? Um, let's, I want to make sure the memory is clear here so we can, so we're only seeing what we expect to see. Okay. What did I say? Level two. All right. So there's our code: level one, level two, and level three. We've got a breakpoint at the beginning at 1300, so that we can step through it. So let's go to 1300. Okay. So this the the monitor shows you the operation before it does it. So it hasn't done this operation yet. We've got to go ahead and take another step for it to do it. So we're going to load A with AA. And we're going to push A on the stack. So before we push A on the stack, let's see what we've got on the stack. Here's the stack from 100 to 1 FF. Now, the top one thing that's a little confusing as far as just trying to visualize this is the top of the stack is at the bottom. Okay, the, the stack fills in bottom up. So really, this is this is what we think of as the top of the stack down here, starting at FF. Um, if we look at the registers, it'll show us the stack pointer is currently pointing to F3, which is right here. So some things have already been pushed on the stack by the operating system, just with basic starting up and the, 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 the screen editor, um, the monitor may have put this here, I, I don't know. But um, so all this stuff has already been pushed on the stack. And right now the stack pointer is pointing to F3, which is right here. Now, some of this stuff up here at the very bottom of the stack, which again, everything is backwards, but this is, the, the Commodore uses the very bottom of the stack for some other stuff just because it assumes you're never going to actually fill up the stack. You, you could, but it, it uses some of that extra space for other things. So we're not going to worry about that. None of, none of these values matter except the ones below the stack pointer for our purposes. Okay. And I'm probably going to get above and below mixed up just because the way it prints it on the screen is kind of backwards from the way you think about it. This is really the, this is the top value. Well, no, sorry, that's not really right. It, it starts filling here, but right now all these values are on the stack. And this right here is the top value of the stack. The stack pointer is pointing here, which is the next open location. So if you push something on, that's where it's going to go. But all these values are the stack values with the zero, 0, on the top. So if I pulled a value, that would be the one I'd get right there. And it goes on down to the, to the bottom of the stack. All right, so hopefully I didn't just make that even more confusing by throwing around the words top and bottom in the wrong place. But so now we're going to push A on the stack. So let's see what happens to our stack and the pointer after we do that. So we've pushed it on the stack, so now we're looking at the no-op. Let's check, let's just look at the bottom two rows of the stack here. So there's our AA. It got pushed on where the stack pointer was at F3. And now if we look at the registers, the stack pointer has now moved up to F2. So when you do a PHA, two things happen the value in the accumulator gets pushed on to the to the location the stack pointer is pointing to and then the stack pointer gets decremented to move it up so the stack pointer went from F3 to F2 and now it's pointing at the next location which is available this value that's here right now the 60 doesn't matter we don't, it doesn't care about that <clears throat> it sees this as the next empty space so our AA is saved on the stack, and now we have the stack pointer pointing to the next empty space. Now, if we continue, we're going to jump to subroutine 130C. And now let's look at the stack and the registers. OK. We jumped from 1304. What happens in a jump subroutine, again, a couple of things happen. 
that ad the address you jump from gets two added to it and it gets put on the stack and so we see it right here again it gets put on where the stack pointer was pointing get the high byte and then the low byte so that it's low byte first in, in memory so here's 1306 which is two more than where we came from why two i don't know um because the next instruction would actually it's going to need to add one more when it does the next instruction it's probably a timing thing in the actual wiring i suppose but it takes it takes the address you came from adds two to it pushes that on the stack and then it decrements the stack pointer by two to, to move it to the next open location so now the stack pointer is f0 it went from f2 to f0 and again, that all happens automatically. It's just done by the CPU because it hit a JSR, jumped a subroutine. So now what we've put, what we've got on the stack, at least from the point our program started running, was first we pushed on AA, and then the CPU pushed on 1306 for us because we did jump subroutine. So now we're at level two in our code as far as you know, as, as far as this is concerned, we're down, we're right here now, loading A with BB, and now we're going to push that on the stack. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've loaded A with BB, pushed it on the stack. Let's check it. Okay, and the registers. So there's our original AA, there's the address that got pushed on, and now there's our BB. And now the stack pointer is pointing to EF, which is the next location. Okay, let's continue. Now we jump to 1318. And let's check that out. Uh, okay, so we did a jump, jump, we did another jump to subroutine to 1318. And so we jumped from 1310. That's where the jump subroutine is, is 1310, and so it adds 2 to that, gets 1312, pushes that on the stack, low byte, you know, well, it pushes the high byte first, so the low byte will come out first. So there's our 1312, and now the stack pointer is pointing to ED, which is the next location. Continuing on, we load A with CC and then push that on the stack, check it again. Now the CC has been pushed in where the stack pointer was pointing at ED. And now the stack pointer got decremented again to point to EC, the next location. Okay, So now we're all the way down to here. Okay, So we're three levels deep now in our um, jumping. Um, so let's continue. We've got a couple of no ops. Now we're going to start pulling back off the stack. So we just pulled A back off the stack. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. Now I guess I could have put something in between the, the push and the pull there just so that we could see the effect. But what happens then when you pull, it, it acts in reverse. First, it decrements the stack pointers, or first, it increments the stack pointer, I should say. So the stack pointer was EC. So the first thing it does, because EC is right here, the first thing it does, you know, the, the stack pointer is always pointing to the next open location. So when you pull, the first thing it does is increments it to get down to the top thing, which is here at FD, and then it pulls that to the accumulator. So the accumulator then gets CC back. And it would be CC even if it wasn't already CC. Um, and so now the stack pointer is pointing to ED, which is now open. We've, you know, it's it's still CC because it doesn't like delete it. It doesn't change its value. It just says, okay, that one's going to be open now. The stack pointer is pointing there now. We've pulled that value. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, so then we return. So we hit a, we hit the RTS right here. So now let's see what happens. Okay. So our stack pointer was ED. So when it hits this return, 
it goes to ED, which is right here, or wait a second, sorry. ED is, is always the open location. So when it hits a return, it wants the next two bytes off the top of the stack. So it increments once, gets the low byte, increments again, gets the high byte. And so it makes an address out of that 1312. It adds one to that, and that's where it returns to. So a jump to subroutine is a three byte instruction. So it adds two to it when it pushes it on the stack, adds another one to it when it pulls it back off the stack, and that's how it ends up knowing what the next instruction is. Like I said, it's, I'm guessing it's a timing thing, why it does, why it adds two at one point, adds another one at the other point. Um, but that's how it knows where to come back to when it hits that return. So if we look at the code, you know, we did this jump to subroutine right here, and so it comes down here and does all this stuff. When it hits this return, it has to know to come back to the next thing after the jump to subroutine. And that's how it does that. When it pushes, when, it, when this happens, it pushes this address right here onto the stack by after adding two to it, it adds two to it, pushes it on the stack. Then when it gets down here, it gets it back off the stack, adds another one to it, and then it has a pointer to this. So if we continue then, and also the stack pointer then is pointing to the next open thing because it, you know, it just got those back. So now it doesn't need these anymore. So now that one's the next open one. Now we get, but we're now we're back at level two, and we're pulling a again. So we're pulling a value off the stack. So when it does that. It first increments the stack pointer. So the stack pointer was EF. The first thing it does is increments it to F0, and then it pulls that value right there to the accumulator. So now the accumulator is BB. See, it was CC before that instruction. Now it's BB. And now the stack pointer is pointing there, where it just got that BB from. Continuing on, now we've done another return from subroutine. So now we're returning from here back up to here and if we check again I know this, um, this is probably getting tedious but we're almost done and check the registers so the stack pointer was zero zero so the first thing it does is it increments it to get the low byte increments it again to get the high byte gets back 1306 adds one to that gets 1307 and that's where it returns control to. So 1307 is the address of this no op right here. And so now we're back to that. Okay, continuing. Now we pull A. And so you can see again the stack pointer was F2, which is right here. So when we pull A, the first thing it does is um, increments the stack pointer so that it's pointing here, gets that value into A, which you can see showing up here now. And the stack pointer is now F3, so it now considers that the next open location. And now we're back to where the program started. And if I continue, because I put a return at the end and the monitor, when you, well, when you when you start the code, when you go to the code, it doesn't do a jump to subroutine. So if I continue, we'll see what happens. It did an it did a return subroutine right here. So the next two things off the stack at f once it decremented or incremented, getting that backwards. Once it incremented this f three which is here, it got this address, 0000. So it jumped off to 0. It added 1 to that because that's what it does when it hits a return return from subroutine. It gets the next address off the stack, the next two bytes, makes an address out of them, adds 1. So it tried to send control of the program off to 0001. Well, there's not code at 001, there's just numbers that are being saved by different things because that's in zero page, and so it crashes. Um, if I 
yeah, and then you get a crash in the internal monitor. Then at, at five, it hits a hits a break. So um, just because it hit a zero, so it, you know it'll it'll try to run the code, but you're going to get some kind of crash because there's not going to be there's probably not going to be code, or at least not the code you expect at the location that you're jumping to. Excuse me a second. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to take a phone call there. We'll see if I cut this out later or just leave it. All right, so all that works because in every case we're pushing A and then pulling A in pairs and we're not, you know, we're not uh, overlapping between that and jumps and when they come back. So like here we pushed A and then we jumped away come back and then pull A. So you always have to kind of have these things bracketed so that they work correctly. Um, otherwise you get like we had at the end there when it when it finally got to the end and ran out of addresses on the stack and jumped off to the wrong place. So then the next question is what if you actually want to manipulate the stack pointer? What if you need to um, manipulate it directly? For instance, let's say here in level 3 let's say we get to a point where we want to jump to subroutine endgame. Um, something like this is going to happen in our worm program, which is what made me think of doing this. Um, we get to a point where there's a collision with with the wall or with the worm itself, and we want to jump to an endgame routine. But the thing is, at that point, we're two or three levels deep in subroutines. So all those subroutines are on the stack, and if we just start returning back to the beginning, we're going to run into code that we don't want running anymore. Um, so let's say our end game routine, we want it to just go all the way back here to level one and finish finish up with level one. Okay. Well, to do that, we have to figure out what's been pushed on the stack and where do we need to move the stack pointer to to make that happen so if you start adding up and you say okay right here so we want to come back to right here let's just put a label there called here so when this jumps away jumps to level two it saves the address that's one less than here on the stack we saw that how that happened before it would take the address of this instruction add two to it which is one less than this and stores it on the stack. So we know that's going to be on the stack. But then we get to level two, we push another thing on the stack right here. So we've pushed that on the stack. Then we jump to level three and push another thing on the stack. And then we jump to end game. So we've pushed a bunch of stuff on the stack that we want to just ignore now when we get to end game and just go back to here. So basically we want to tell the stack, okay, forget about that stuff on the top of it. So let's count up how many things get pushed on. This is this basically we want this to be the top of it. We want to treat it like the thing that got pushed on right here is now the top of the stack, even though there are other things that got added to it. So what got added was one byte here for that for that push, two bytes for this address, so that's three, another byte for the, this push, that's four, two more bytes for this jump, that's six. Okay. But if we if we return here, that's gonna take that's gonna let's see. Yeah. So basically when it does this, it's going to push this on there. We want to take that back off. Plus this, that's 3 bytes. Plus this, 4, 5. Plus this, that's 6. Okay. So I think, and that's a, like I say, it, it's... Um, let's put a no-op in here. Let's put a couple no-ops in here. just to spread things out again. So when we get here, we want it to first, first we need to get the stack pointer into X. Okay. 
then to take, we'll just do this. You know, obviously in a program you would probably, the thing is you can't do math in the X register. So if you want to subtract six, you're gonna to have to move X to, you know, you're gonna to have to transfer X to the accumulator, subtract six there, which means setting the carry flag, subtracting six, push, transferring it back to X. And, you know, so it's probably just as fast to just do six decrements. And then transfer X back to the stack pointer. So let's see how that works. All right, and look, let's reset. Okay, so here's our code. So what happens is in our in our very first routine in level one, we jump away to 130C. And eventually when we get down here to, let's see, here's, I gotta go a little more. Oops, not that far. 13 under two, 13 to E. Okay. When he gets down here to end, here's end game. When he gets down here, we want it to move the stack pointer so that when it, when it hits this return, it returns all the way back to level one instead of just returning back to level three. Okay, so we want it to return back to here to 1307, that's, that's the goal. Okay. So let's see if it works. Um, right now, if we look at the stack, oops. right now the stack, whoops, what happened there? Right now the stack pointer is at F3, which is here, so it's gonna it's gonna pile up from there. Um, okay, I think we still have a break set. Okay, so let's start walking through it. Okay, this jump jumps off to level two. And so when we come back, we want to come back to 1307. Right now that has put 1306 on the stack. If we check the stack, stack pointer is F0. So this is the next open space. That means this is these two are on top of the stack. So there's 1306. So we want to be coming back to 1307 when we hit our return in endgame. So let's continue stepping through. There's our jump to subroutine level three. And there's our jump to subroutine end end game. Okay, so let's see where we are after that on the stack. Okay, now the stack pointer is E A, which is here, which means the last thing it pushed on was thirteen one E. So here's the address we want to return back to plus one but there's a bunch of stuff that's been added since then. So, which should be, should be six bytes, but we'll see. So now we transfer the stack pointer to X. So now X has EA, which was the stack pointer. We decrement it six times. And so now it's decremented down to E4, and now we're going to transfer it back to the stack pointer. So now the stack pointer is E4. And so now, where is that? What's going to be on the stack? Well, E4 is... Oh, shoot. I made a mistake. I don't want to decrement, I want to increment. So they're, they're, like I said, it, it gets confusing sometimes because when you're looking at it on the screen, you're thinking about coming down, you're really going up in addresses. So we have to change this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Dumb mistake, but All right, let's try this again. Um, let's do a hard reset and then load it again, just so we 
don't have a bunch of other stuff on the stack already. I just have the minimum amount. Stuff that the, let's see, so the stack right now, yeah, stack pointers at F3, which is right here, so there's just this minimal amount of stuff already on the stack from the operating system. So, we've got our, do we still have a rate point? Yes, so let's start, try that again. All right, we're going through level one, jump to subroutine 130C off to level two. So we want to come back to 1307, 1306, therefore should be saved on the stack. So let's check that. Yep, there's 1306. The stack pointer is pointing at F0, which is the next location. All right, so let's continue on. Now level two jumps to level three. We push another thing on. Level three jumps to end game. All right, so right now, the stack pointer is EA, which is this one. And so the things on the stack, the top of the stack is an address, 131E. And then under that is CC, which was the last thing we pushed on with this PHA command right here. The next thing under that is an address, 1312. And then the next thing under that is BB, which was the, the thing we pushed on up here. And then the thing under that is the address we want to actually be jumping back to. So right now the stack pointer is here at EA, so we'll see what happens next. We transfer the stack pointer to X, and so now X has EA. And then we increment X six times. So now the stack pointer is pointing up to EF, which is right here. Or no, sorry, I'm looking at, looked at the wrong line. So now the stack pointer is pointing to F0, which is right here. So it's seeing this as the next open location. So therefore, this is the top of the stack. This is the top value on the stack right now. So it transfers that x value back to the stack pointer. So now the stack pointer is point is f f zero right here. Like I, like I already said, it's that's the next open space. So now this is the top of the stack. And so now this return then gets that value back 1306 off the top of the stack. It moves the stack pointer down to, or sorry, it moves it up to, it increments it by two to move it down the stack. So the stack pointer is here now, and it returns all the way back to 1307. Okay, because we changed the stack pointer. So the CPU doesn't know what values you're getting off, you know, doesn't know what values it's getting off the stack when it does a return. It just gets the next two, adds one to it, and returns there. So, you know, we call it a return, but that's because the, of the, you know, of this stuff that the CPU is doing under the hood. But if you change the stack pointer yourself, you can get it to return anywhere because it's really just a, tra a transfer of control to another address. It's really a jump. Um, and the jump to subroutine is just a jump other than this stuff that it does with the stack under the hood. So we come back to 1307 and then it goes on from there. So if you look, if we just take one more look at the code here, you know, level one jumped to level two, level two jumped to level three, level three jumped to end game, but then end game, because we didn't want to go back to level three and level two, we were able to just change the stack pointer so that when end game returns, it returned all the way back up to level one. So that's the kind of thing you can do if you need to. You don't do that most of the time with the stack. You just use it as quick storage push something on, pop it back off. But if you do need to manipulate it, that is how you do it. Transfer it to X, change it however you need to change it, and then push it back on. So that is how the stack works. Um, have any questions, please leave them in the comments or suggestions or anything. And uh, thank you for watching.